So upping the boost in a turbocharged car is not the only way to get more power and today I want to explain to you why that is. Turbocharging is basically about getting the most amount of oxygen into the combustion chamber as possible. While yes, you could increase that by upping the boost pressure, there might be limitations why that actually would not be a good idea, be it your engine or your rods might not be capable of it, or you are limited by engine management, or something else being a limiting factor, turbo size maybe, and that is why we want to focus on something that not a lot of people think about that is actually more important to making power in a turbocharged engine than actually boost pressure. The thing we are talking about is exhaust back pressure or rather manifold pressure and that is not in the intake manifold but in the exhaust manifold because in the exhaust manifold between the head and the turbo or more likely the exhaust valve and the turbo there is a lot of pressure most cases there is more pressure there than in front of the turbo on the fresh side so there is a point when that difference becomes higher that the pressure in the exhaust manifold builds up and pushes the old actually exhaust back into the combustion chamber where it gets mixed in with the fresh air. For that reason, cars make less power the higher the exhaust manifold pressure is. How do we get that exhaust manifold pressure down? Well, first of all, there are standard mods that you can do. You can improve your exhaust. So for example, run a three inch downpipe uh, without a cat if you're on a race application or get a better working intake system. For example, there are a lot of suboptimal systems where in a lot of cases there is a tight elbow in front of the turbo inlet and that actually makes the turbo work or have to work harder and therefore the exhaust gases have to spin the turbine shaft or the turbo shaft to a higher speed or higher RPM to achieve the desired boost pressure and therefore the wastegate opens later and the exhaust manifold pressure is higher. So the first thing we could do here would be just do bolt on mods, improve your intake, improve your exhaust. We are starting also from the cheapest mods you can do to the more expensive mods, I guess. Another thing would be porting, 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 porting. And that is not talking about the head specifically, but some different stuff. For example, you could e even port on the uh, fresh air side. So when you are talking about the turbo compressor wheel, compressor wheel outlet, making it as easy for the air as possible to get into your engine. And that will be one thing that can reduce the effort the exhaust gas has to produce to get the turbocharger spinning or rather the RPM the turbocharger has to achieve until the desired boost pressure is achieved. You can do that by, for example, porting the inlet of the intercooler because you are always going to have a little bit of a step in between the uh, silicone joiner that joins into the intercooler and the intercooler itself is relatively thick and there is going to be some air turbulence there and that applies to any connection there is for example to the throttle body or you could even do that on the outlet of the compressor housing to smooth that out so there is less turbulence while yes that's only a very slight difference it will make some differences if you combine everything together and if you're at the edge of the turbocharger's working range that can extend it a little bit upwards and make more power the same applies after the throttle body while most intake manifolds are pretty well designed in the oem there are some cases where the transition from the throttle body to the intake manifold or from the intake manifold to to the head is not 100% smooth. So there may be a step inside where the air experiences some turbulences as well. So you can make that flow better as well, but that's not really going to make a lot of difference. Uh, staying on the intake side, what can make a lot of difference though, is using an intercooler that has a larger surface area, not frontal area, but actually area where the air can push through the intercooler. If it is thicker or larger from top to bottom, the larger or the more surface area the incoming air has to pass through the 
uh, intercooler, the less pressure drop you are going to have across the intercooler. So it makes sense to buy, first of all, a high quality intercooler core. Uh, so from a name brand or at least a if it has to be like a Chinese model, just look for one that is at least decent quality and also a decent size and maybe go on the bigger side for what you actually need. As a good example, on the 1AT side mount intercoolers, there are the stock ones, they are about 50 to 60 millimeters thick and there are actually ones that are 100 or 130 millimeters even thick they will not provide as much cooling for the air that is proven that 130 millimeters thick doesn't really work that well but the reason for that why it will make sense is because the air coming into the intercooler has a lot more surface area to pass through the uh, through the intercooler and therefore will result in a lower pressure drop so the turbo does not have to work as hard to achieve the same amount of boost pressure in the intake manifold as with for example a smaller intercooler therefore reducing back pressure and in turn the engine will produce more power because less exhaust gas is pushed back into the engine going on the exhaust side this is also something very important and maybe even more important than the intake side obviously because there it is where the big gains lie yes a three inch downpipe as i said helps with exhaust back pressure after the turbine wheel that is clear and a lot of people know that this will make power but before the turbine wheel that's where it actually is more important to get that pressure down and this can be done in a few ways first of all the same as in the intake manifold you have to look out on the head to the exhaust manifold transition so that there are no steps in there and then what is really important and what a lot of manufacturers actually don't really do or especially in the aftermarket there seem to be a lot of mismatched sizes there is very often a step from the transition in the exhaust manifold to the turbo i've seen that in a lot of uh, TDO4 applications where the flange in the or the laser cut flange for the manifold is a lot bigger the opening for the turbo than the turbo itself so there is a huge step and a huge amount of turbulence that will create back pressure within the exhaust manifold um, before it even can enter the turbo so you are going to have to port that on the turbo side or depending on which side it is in your case and make that opening the same size so the airflow is smooth through there. The other thing, if you have a cast manifold, it makes sense to slightly reshape the runners with some porting and also make them as smooth as possible. It is proven on the exhaust side that it makes a difference if you go to the point of even polishing the runners because first of all, a smoother finish will aid in airflow and second of all, it will provide a smoother finish and carbon buildup won't stick to it as much as it will on a rough cast surface. And of course, most of the um, stock manifolds have some room to port and the openings to the turbo are pretty small or rather the transitions are very, very small in the passageways. The only drawback you get from porting the exhaust manifold is that you are going to lose exhaust velocity. So that means your turbo will spool slightly slower, but if you are looking for more top end and want to sacrifice or can sacrifice a bit of spool, then this is the way to go. Going into the turbochargers, also something you can port. Well, yes, you could a bigger turbine housing, which we are going to talk about in a few minutes, but you could also, if you first of all don't have access to it because it's maybe a stock turbocharger or you already have the biggest housing for that turbo, you can port that housing somewhat. Don't go too far because if the casting gets too thin, it might crack due to heat, but you can port it and especially you can remove any casting flash and make the surface finish more smooth so that the airflow is promoted or the exhaust gas flow. There is also an argument to be had for looking inside the turbine housing, the gap where the gases have to transition from the curvature to the turbine wheel actually sometimes is very rough and has a very, very sharp edge. 
uh, you might be able to smooth that out a bit and gain a lot of flow. The issue here is though, if you make that larger, that opening, if you make it too large, your turbo won't work properly at all. But if you make it a bit larger so that it's still uh, at the edge of where the turbine wheel is the biggest size, then you can gain a lot of top end, but you also have to sacrifice a little bit of spool. There is some give and take here and there, so it's always kind of a trade-off. But for example, making any transitions a little bit smoother will not be a disaster to spool, so it will only cost you maybe 100 RPM or maybe 200 in total if you do all these mods combined on the same turbo. But smoothing out that edge is something that can aid in flow and can aid in a lower exhaust back pressure because the air does not have to turn as sharply because it has to do a like 160 degree turn anyway but the there aren't any edges where the flow is really disturbed a lot going out of the turbine wheel while we are kind of again in the exhaust housing still we have the path to the downpipe. In some cases, this might not be with all vehicles or with all engines, but in some cases, the flap of the wastegate actually goes into the flow of the exhaust gases. So that's something you can also look out for and smooth out or make that flap a bit narrower so that it is more flow optimized than it is before although that's not really the case on many applications uh, an example i know would be the ford ecoboost engines so the for a uh, 2.3 liter those have a very problematic uh, turbine housing where there's a lot of room for improvement so everything i told you now is kind of relatively cheap and easy to do. And it will reduce exhaust manifold pressure, which in turn reduces the temperatures, the exhaust gas temperatures, and will let your engine last longer and a happier life. Now for the a little bit more expensive tricks, I'd say. First one would be get a larger turbine housing. Going from, for example, on a GT28 unit from a 0.64 to a 0.82 housing will give you more top end power and also due to reducing manifold pressure or exhaust manifold pressure will gain performance no matter what you do. Um, you will get more power at the same boost level. Although in this case, you will also lose a bit of spool because of the larger rear housing that has to be filled with exhaust gas. On some applications even, if your engine is large enough, like you are above two liters, for example, it might not even make that huge of a difference. So you might be able to run a larger housing without sacrificing much of spool in any way. So you might have to try that out. Pulsar, for example, offers really cheap solutions for bigger housings. And if you have a more exotic setup, um, Mamba also offers a lot of turbine housings for different flanges, mainly T3. Then the other way you could improve flow would be using a tubular exhaust manifold. Well, yes, if you are already have a turbo car that is coming uh, or that comes with a cast manifold, that's really kind of a big investment to do. But if you are building a new setup, and are choosing between a cast manifold and a tubular manifold. To make more power at the same boost level, a tubular manifold will aid you and will get better results than a cast manifold. That is, if the cast manifold is a log style manifold, so it does not have any dividers in between the cylinders. There nowadays are a lot of cast manifolds that are pretty good, for example, from Artec. Uh, they have dividers and they are known to flow pretty well, although still a tubular exhaust manifold will uh, aid in more power or will aid in less exhaust manifold back pressure. The reason for that is the lengths of the exhaust runners can be uh, matched perfectly and the diameters can be varied depending on your setup. If you use larger runners, the pressure obviously is going to be reduced, but there is going to be a lot more lag depending on how big you go with the runners. There are people even running 37 or 36 millimeter runners, which is pretty small, but that aids in spool. And with an equal length uh, manifold, you will get the, let's say, best solution for kind of a low power to mid power setup, 
but if you want to run more power then in that case if you run a manifold like this it will produce higher exhaust manifold pressure so it's kind of a thing where you have to look at the application what kind of engine you are building and then choose the manifold accordingly although as i said before i would just not choose a log style manifold as they create a really high exhaust back pressure it's only really a choice if you don't have any other options lastly things you can upgrade on your turbo that's actually something um, obviously hybrid turbos have been around for a long time but mostly on a hybrid turbo the uh, compressor wheel gets changed but there nowadays are a lot of options to actually change the turbine wheel and that is kind of cool because uh, there are companies such as Mamba who offer upgraded turbine wheels with a new design that has been first tried by Xona Rotor which is the 5x5 blade turbine design so it only has five smaller blades and five bigger blades which will be able to handle more exhaust flow while being lighter at the same time and therefore achieving a similar spool characteristic than for example a nine blade turbine that has been used by most of the current manufactured uh, hybrid turbos that use an upgraded turbine wheel well yes you can also upgrade your compressor wheel it's not going to make as big of a difference. You are going to see the same effect. So the turbocharger needs less RPM to achieve the same boost level or same boost pressure in the intake manifold because the larger or more efficiently designed billet wheel will flow more air, but that will only be a relatively minor upgrade compared to a five plus five turbine wheel that will really lower the back pressure in the manifold compared to, for example, a stock 11 blade one. I will also go into further detail on this in a future videos about TurboTech. Um, that's just something I want to note and a really cool upgrade that you can do. Yes, you have to bring your turbo to a shop that can balance it afterwards because they have to be balanced after you change anything in the rota rotating assembly. But it is a possibility that will, yes, cost a little bit of money but is very very effective that's it for these mods in decreasing your exhaust manifold back pressure and therefore increasing your power at the same boost level i hope you could learn something from this if you have any questions any advice or anything else that i should know leave a comment down below otherwise i wish you a nice day and goodbye